Okay, so we are with Nama Oye Luther, coordinator of the Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative Africa. Now, Nama, I mean, you have obviously have a particular interest in human rights. To what extent were human rights issues canvassed in the campaign? Well, I firstly, the very fact that we were electing, I mean, we were, we were voting and people were standing for political office or public office is a human rights issue because then we were fulfilling and asserting our political rights. Um, one key issue that um, came up that we as a Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative have been consistently um, putting in the public domain is the issue of the 44 Ghanaians who have disappeared or have been killed in the Gambia. Now this occurred when um, Nana Adudankwa Akufuado was the Minister of Foreign Affairs. So um, some of the questions that he had to answer was what sort of action or inaction, you know, what action did he take? And, and I, I, I found that very interesting, especially because... Kamala so these were issues that came up in organized debates and stuff yes, like that? Yes, these were issues that came up in organized debate during me, the media encounter. Which, which I thought was very good. Um, the issue of police. Did you find his explanation satisfactory? Well, um, sometimes satisfactory, sometimes not satisfactory. Uh, is it fair? I mean, of course, well, it was under his watch to some extent, but he was part of the government. Do you think it's fair to hold it against him, more or less? Well, um, we can't say that it's fair to hold it against him. What we can say is that it happened under his watch and we found we, it was very difficult for us to procure information and we had to go to the public and use the media and it, it got to some time that we were not too happy with the stance of government on this matter and also with the Ghana Police Service. So we were happy it came up as a political issue. How was the police service involved in this? Well, the police service tried to prevent us from demonstrating. Oh, I see. Yes, they tried to prevent us. They tried to intimidate us. The, the police service tried to stop us from walking, um, the, we and the families from walking to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to register our protests, especially with a lack of communication uh, between the foreign affairs and the relatives. So uh, for us, police brutality also came up. But you know the other side of it is, uh, of course, Nana Kufuado was running also to some extent as, a, as an established human rights campaigner. Mm. I know he had established, or he had been involved in the establishment of the, well, more or less a Ghana chapter of the, I think a, an NGO for African rights, and of course, um, also in also some advocacy ways. Did that register with you? Well, it did not register because I think the key question that people were asking was, so what did you do to address the situation of 44 Ghanaians being killed or disappearing in the Gambia? Exactly what did you do? And I believe his campaign team preempted this. And so you see some of the documentaries that was telecast of Nana Kufado speaking. He, he tried to um, give us some answers as to what happened. And then... Uh, you know, action was taken. ECOWAS set up, a, um, uh, funded by the United Nations, um, a three-man uh, investigative panel. So then, getting to the elections, there was a lot more information on exactly what the government was doing. So as far as we were concerned, we had achieved um, some results. In but st stay, stay with the human rights issue broadly. Uh, I think it's fair to say that historically, the human rights plan in campaigning has been used more against the NDC. Yes. It has been was used that important? Was that, was that the case in this campaign? Yes, it still came up. It has been used more against the NDC because there are references to the AFRC, the military regimes. There are also references to the PNDC. And you find out that like uh, about two or three weeks before the actual elections, the MPP actually came up with an advert where you hear the sound of beating um, and, and what have you. The, the issue is whether it resonated with the people and I, and I believe that on 28th of December we will find out because it has come up. Uh, do you, think it, did? Do you think it resonated? Well, if you look at maybe uh, yes and no, because if you look at 47.92 or 
you know, if it really was effective as a strategy, then I don't think the NDC would have gotten 47.93. I think um, people are people are forgetting, and it is not really a quite an issue for them. They are looking more at the economic situation and their lives, their livelihoods, and um, the status, like whether they're getting bread or butter or cocoa or banku. So these are the issues, employment, unemployment, poverty. So in terms of priorit prioritizing Human issues, rights will step way down. Yes, that, I think that's... But you are also a well-known gender activist. How did gender play out in the campaign and election? Well, I think uh, positively in the beginning because then uh, for the very first time we had two very um, effective and highly efficient women in the persons of Hajja Halima uh, Mahama, presently Minister of Women and Children Affairs, and Mrs. Betty Modi Prisu, presently Legal Director for the Commonwealth Secretariat, actually being considered and almost selected for the slot of Vice Presidential Candidate. It didn't happen. Then we had various campaigns, but unfortunately we've had a decrease from 25 seats. We have, um, I'm hearing 19 women have been um, elected, I'm hearing 15. I'm not too sure, but we've had a decrease of about six to seven. And then key women like Gladys Asma, Amelie Tego did not stand. And I would blame the political system, the first past um, the post uh, system, that makes an assumption that women and men can compete for political office on an even playing field. So this first past the post system does not take cognizance of the fact that women in Ghana have certain setbacks and face certain challenges, even in putting themselves forth for primary. I've, I've heard you say publicly that in the American election, you put race above gender. What would you put above gender in the Ghanaian context? Economic situation, the economic conditions, ethnicity, party affiliation. You put ethnicity above Not gender? Not me, but this is what I can see that the electorate okay. puts the No, I must go with you that no, you put above gender in Ghana. What would I put above gender? I would put um, leadership qualities. I would look, that, that's the only thing I'll put above gender. I'll look at whether the person can actually lead Ghana to, to, to the level that I think we should be. That's Thank the only you very thing much. I'm prepared to put above gender. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, okay.